uh, when I was uh, about five or six, I already uh, followed my father um, to the temple. So my father was a very strong Dharma supporter of the temple in our, in our hometown. And uh, so I, I feel so uh, happy for the, your children and for the families um, that they have the good condition and the good environment um, to encounter Buddha Dharma, the practice of mindfulness at a very young age. Um, so when I was young, even I went, I followed my father to the temple. And most of the time I was on my own, uh, hanging around outside of the temple while my father and other adults were uh, chanting and praying. And I didn't have like such good programs like the children's program. Yeah. So... Yeah, I'm so happy. Um, let us enjoy three sounds of the bell. Mm. We come back to our breathing. We breathe in peace and breathe out joy. Mm. Cultivating happiness and joy in this moment. Dear respected teacher, Thai, dear brothers and sisters, uh, dear parents. Um, So when we look around in the meditation hall, we see that um, many of us here are parents of our children. Any adults that um, have your children with you for this retreat? Yeah, but many of us are parents of our children but each one of us, um, of course, we as monastics, we don't have our children, our own children. But each one of us is a child of our parents. And our parents have their parents. So we see that <clears throat> there are many, many generations of parents, grandparents before us, before our parents. So we are like uh, such a long lineage, a long line of um, ancestors in our life. And our children is the continuation. Um, Our grandchildren is also the continuation uh, of us. And so this is indeed a family retreat, right? With so many... We bring with us our own children of our lifetime, but at the same time, we also carry with us uh, 
many generations, family members of our ancestors are with us. Um, and we monastics, we are in the spiritual family. So you bring your uh, family to our family, and we are like a big family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, being with the children, I it it, it uh, brings me joy, uh, recalling my childhood experience, and I'm so happy that uh, uh, our group made a very interesting uh, program activities for the kids, like uh, like t- maybe today or tomorrow, Sister Bunny, Sister Tanduan will bring them down to uh, the sister's vegetable garden to uh, 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 teach the, the kids to uh, plant the seeds and water the seeds. I like it so much. Mm. Um, because like, when we learn about Buddhist psychology, we also mention about mind and seeds and habit energies, right? So this is so uh, helpful for us to uh, learn about um, planting seeds, taking care of seeds, and also help the children to learn uh, being with nature and also learn like watering the good seeds in them. So I'd like to reveal a little bit. Um, in Buddhist psychology, we consider our mind to be a field in which many, many kinds, many different kinds of seeds, uh, including wholesome seeds and unwholesome seeds, There are positive seeds as well as negative seeds, right? Like like the seed of happiness and joy and peace, of understanding, and also uh, seeds of suffering, of difficulties. And we know that um, the seeds, there are kind of seeds that have been there, like even before we were born, we call innate. Um, seeds, and there are many seeds that have been transmitted to us from many, many generations uh, of ancestors, and the, the, the youngest ancestors are our parents. Mm. And also the seeds that we receive uh, from the field of education, right? When we go to school, um, we uh, also uh, plant the seed and we also receive the seeds from school. Uh, When we go to work, yeah, we also receive seeds. Uh, The seeds have been watered by the environment when we work, when we uh, interact with friends, teachers, Um, colleagues. Mm -hmm. So, ancestors, um, the environment, right? We have all those kind of seeds. And every day, throughout our actions in terms of uh, speaking, acting, and thinking, we continuously uh, plant the seeds in our consciousness. We are so uh, influenced by the seeds, by, by the seeds transmitted to our parents, to our uh, environment um, and, and the uh, society. And the seeds carry in them the habit energies, right? Habits, uh, they are the, the, the fruit of our behavior. Like when we... Um, encounter some situation and we have the reactions to the situation. We have that reaction to somebody's words, uh, deeds. And so, uh, so the ro- those reactions to things, to people's actions, form the habit energy. 
and 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 it is like the patterns, and and most of the times we are uh, so caught up in that uh, habitual way. So that's the 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 the, the patterns. And with the practice of mindfulness, we have a chance to look into the seeds in our consciousness, look into our habit energies, so that we can identify which kind of seeds that are most beneficial for us, for our life, and also for us to transmit to our our children. Um, so coming to the retreat, it is to put ourselves in the uh, very uh, uh, re- yeah. We put in an environment where we practice stopping, stop our thinking and come back to our breathing when we hear the ringing of the phone. So that is to plant the good seeds of uh, coming back to our our breathing to recognize what is happening in the present moment, to train ourselves to be fully present, right? So as parents, we, we practice mindfulness in order to take care of ourselves to take care of ourselves before we can take care of our children, our family. This is all the basic um, practice, care and love for oneself. So, uh, what kind of um, activities or practice that parents can, 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 can develop the seed of mindfulness? So, Please, uh, I hope that during the retreat, uh, with all the activities uh, you attend, you've been attending, and uh, see for yourself um, what practices that you'd like to take home and to continue to, to, to strengthen so that you can be uh, mindful can be more mindful. Yeah. Because we know that we have the, even though we have the seed of mindfulness inside us, and we have the good condition that supports the practice, like the community, the Sangha, mm. but then uh, in order to, for the energy of mindfulness to be sustainable, we need one element, that is the continuity the consistence of the practice. So we hope that when um, you uh, see for yourself the takeaways in in terms of practice so that you can bring home. Uh, For example, for example, morning sit, right? Or the the moment that you wake up uh, to begin the day and to go... Uh, uh, to the bathroom. So please see what kind of practice that you can help you to be really fully present uh, for, uh, for, for yourself. Mm. Uh, like we train the children to place their shoes neatly and tidy uh, in front of them, the, the meditation hall. So if you, you like to continue that practice so that the whole family can uh, and can uh, can apply, or making your morning tea or coffee, and enjoying uh, the meal in silence, etc. Um, and we know that uh, the practice should be should brings us joy, should bring us relaxation, and uh, so. When we do such things, even though it is just a daily activity, um, remember to also release tensions and put aside the worries so that you can listen deeply. So fully present and listen deeply 
to what is going on so that you can be also aware of um, the beauty around you. And so that you can be able to be spacious, to be there for your loved ones, for the children, and to listen deeply to the, your children without reacting. That is a practice of mindfulness. Right? If we try too hard, uh, and the practice seems to be too mechanic, too rigid, there's not enough relaxation, not enough joy and interest in the, uh, uh, the practice, and it, it, it cannot last long. Mm. And if um, the, the practice of mindfulness uh, looks like uh, so simple, so easy to do, and we are uh, too laxed and too easy going, then it's not, it's not helpful at all. Uh, it's not helpful either. Mm. So there, there should be a middle way. Mm. Because if it is too laxed, the practice, then there is not enough concentration. There's not enough the energy of concentration for us in order to really uh, arrive at the insight. So it's, it's so easy, simple. You may have listened to this thousands of times. You know, that you may get more. That's why I'd like to bring in some creativity in this reminder of practice of um, mindfulness by singing to you the song... Uh, the, the, the six mantra song that we hope that during the retreat, the children's program will sing to you at the being evening on Saturday. Um, so the first mantra, do you know about this mantra song? Why it is called mantra? Uh, of course, uh, we hope that it does not bring magical, supernatural power <laughs> to, to make a change. But um, for the spiritual practice, uh, to recite a mantra is to help us gain concentration. So concentration uh, is crucial for the practice. So um, to come back to oneself, to care for oneself, to be fully present in order to to be able to listen deeply. So the first mantra goes like this. I am here for you. 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 So we need to repeat many times in order to arrive at the concentration, in order to have enough concentration. So please uh, practice with me. Uh, we can close your eyes and join me. So you, um, now is just to, to offer our loving presence for ourselves first. I am here for you. 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 I am fresh, solid, calm and free. Offering the best of myself, I am here for you. So that is what we really wish the parents to do for themselves first before they can offer freshness, solidity, calm, uh, yeah, uh, and peace to their loved ones. So uh, wherever or whenever you remember, so please practice this. Mm -hmm. And then the second mantra. You know the second mantra? I am here for you is the first mantra. The second one, I know you're there for me and I'm so happy. Mm -hmm. So when we come back to ourselves and we recognize um, um, that, like, like the, the miracle, the wonder of our body, right? So we also say thank to our body, to our mind, that uh, we are still strong and healthy. We still have the good condition to do many things for ourselves and for the family. So we sing to ourselves with love. I know that you are there and I am so happy. I know that you are there and I am so happy. Your presence is so precious to me. 
I know, th I know that you are there, and I am so happy. So we are, when we are present, and we recognize the presence of the other person, we, we cherish the presence. So your presence is so precious to me. I know you're there, and I'm so happy. So just by those two, first two mantras, and you are able to master the practice of mindfulness. So easy. Okay. Can we listen to one sound of the bell? So as parents, um, when we are be able to, um, to reflect, mm. to reflect on our children, mm. if we can spend the time in our day uh, to meditate on the potential um, the good seeds, all the positive seeds that we can can uh, discover in in our children, uh, so that uh, we can reflect back those beauty, those uh, qualities uh, to them, so that we can help um, build the. The, the, what's, what we call the self-esteem the, the, for the children to, to see their value, to see their worth. Because we know that um, many of us, when we share that, oh, I am not good enough, no matter how hard I try, I still see that I am not good enough. And many of us have a lot of complexes um, because we cannot meet with the expectation of the parents. Cannot uh, meet with uh, uh, all the expectations um, that the society um, demands. So it has become the pressure for people. Mm. And so, like, as parents, it is so helpful that um, parents help you know, see the, the value, the, uh, the flowers, the positive seeds in the children. And also look deeply to understand uh, what they can support the children. So um, when I was young, um, uh, let me share with you a story. When I was young, I. Um, one of my dreams was that I wanted to become a singer. I love singing so much. And so when I help in the children program, it's just to order the seat of liking to sing. Um, but of course, my father didn't like singing. I, I remember I said, well, oh, Papa, I wanted to, to become a singer. And he said, oh, uh, no, 
your life would become very complicated. So become a, a nun instead. So the fact that I'm staying here, becoming a nun, because uh, I, I was influenced by my father's consciousness. Mm. And it is, it's so interesting to recall. Um, my father didn't sing, but he chanted. Yeah, because he, he went to the temple, so he chanted. And uh, I often uh, would, like in Vietnam, we have the culture of taking naps after lunch. And I was so close to my father when I was young. And instead of lullabying me for the nap, he would chant for me. Yeah. So as a child, I went to the temple with my father, but I was laying by myself outside the temple, but still in my consciousness, um, the chanting somehow got in my, my consciousness. And then I heard my father's chant. That's why when I became a nun, it didn't take me too long to, to train, um, to get the training in uh, ceremonies or chanting. I just had that seed already in me. Hmm. Um, but but how, uh, the environment, because... Um, um, we like watching TV, right? As, as kids, we love watching TV. And back then, in the 80s, um, not so many families uh, in Vietnam had uh, TV, a TV. So we had a TV, and we had a big front yard. And our neighbors would gather um, in the front yard uh, in my house to watch TV together. And back then, Vietnam was so still poor, and so there would be um, um, power outage so often. A good, like every other day, there would be power outage. So once when we were watching TV and the power went out, and so that came about like some spontaneous performances. And I remember that I would just invite myself to stand on a stool, and I would sing. Uh, but um, so when I was around my father, I would listen to the chanting. But when he went to work, then I was in contact with other um, sources. So I would hear my older siblings who were in their 20s singing love songs. And, and on TV programs, I would hear people sing a lot of uh, kinds of music. So, uh, um, yeah, I, I like singing since then. Um, and I also, like when I grow up, uh, go to school, um, I chose to learn um, English, English through the English songs. So that is how I, I, uh, I found joy in learning English. And you, you know the, the song, Greatest Love of All, sung by Whitney Houston, right? Mm. Yeah, when I um, like to regain confidence, when I want to uh, have um, uh, inspiration, I would like to hum or sing that, that song. Mm. And I hope that if you are inspired, like uh, in the being um, on Saturday, you, you may like to sing that together. It is such a very beautiful song. Because mm. uh, it also goes along well uh, with this uh, spirit of the family retreat. I believe the children are our future. Yeah? Can somebody sing this? <laughs> you are shy. I am shy, yeah. When I was young, I had a lot of energy, and I wanted to, to do this and that. I wanted to become this body and that body, but then when I grow up, I became very shy, which is so 
no, I, I, I'm not saying that weird, but there should be a reason. Because when we live in the environment, we are in, influenced by the consciousness of our parents, right? And by the environment. Mm. So, like, as, and, and the, the children see themselves through the eyes of other people, of the adults, of the parents, and the consciousness of the parents, of the adults, uh, affect, affect the consciousness of the children. So I know the seed of shyness comes from where? Um, I'm the youngest in my family, big family. My parents are a lot, a lot older than me. Um, like, like, I remember one time my, when I was young and my father would take me uh, um, out and he happened to run into one of his friends, like a long time old friend, and, and his friend called, Anh bái, chở cháu ngoại đi chơi hả? Yeah, and so he was, he, he, he sounded like uh, embarrassed and said, dạ. Yeah. So, so his friend said, uh, Brother Bai, are you taking your granddaughter out? And he was kind of like embarrassed, saying, dạ. Yeah. And then he turned to me and said, oh, nếu mà ai hỏi con là cháu ngoại của ba là con dạ nha. So if somebody asks you whether you are my granddaughter, say yes, okay? That's what he said. Uh, yeah, so um, I, I remember many times I wanted to, because I share a lot with my father, all my dreams and <laughs> desire, but uh, not all, most of the time he uh, agreed, he supported me. <laughs> um, but um, luckily, I didn't hold on to any um, suffering, big suffering, because I know that my father loved me. And he didn't use the language of authority to ban me from doing anything. He just, yeah, he didn't really explain to me about like uh, what is good or what is not good. Mm. Um, so we, we, that's why the role of the parents are so important uh, in like uh, shaping <laughs> our the 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 development of the child. Mm. So coming back to that song, greatest love of all, I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. And what else? Give them a sense of pride. Yes, give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how, how we used to be. Yeah. I like that song so much. Um, the sense of bride speaks to my heart because um, until now, the seed of shyness is still in me. Whenever the Sangha assigned me to um, give a Dharma talk, <laughs> my first answer would say no, <laughs> because I'm very shy. Um, uh, and I, I see that the, the lack of confidence is still in me and I have to work with in order to transform. So living in a big family with many older siblings, a lot older than me, I didn't have to do anything. Everything was well taken care of. And my, my, my mother was a good cook and, and, and he has so much, she, she has so many things to do. So, so the adults tend to like trying to do things effectively and efficiently, right? And so I remember my mother would complain, <laughs> complain about me when she asked me to help. Không có được cái gì. 
you are so slow. <laughs> yes, you are so slow, and you are good for nothing. <laughs> so that is the one of the comments that I often received when I was young. And when I entered the monastic sangha, my sisters in the Dharma also say that I am as slow as a turtle. <laughs> And so in the children's group, my nickname is Sister Turtle. Yeah, I know that I'm slow, I'm still slow, and it's so good that um, in this environment, when we promote slow motion, <laughs> to practice to slow down um, our um, reactivity, it, it helps. So people slow down, and I don't have to speed up too much, so it's like a, not too much a gap. <laughs> But then, yeah, I still have to work with um, the, um, the, the habit energies that I have received um, in, from my childhood. And as parents, uh, when we look deeply into all the potential, um, so that we can also discover, oh, our children has the spiritual nature. Yeah, we can develop develop that because it is so helpful um, uh, nowadays. Um, if the child can um, know the practice of coming back to themselves to take care of their emotion. I was so moved yesterday evening when I witnessed the, ch the children uh, practice, listening to the bell, and we make squares in the meditation hall and we call them breathing room. So they could not sit still for five or ten minutes. But then when Nathan um, asked them to move in the breathing room and practice listening to the bell, they do it so well. I'm so amazed. So please, if you see this uh, uh, in your child, please continue to water the seed. Because mm. it is so, 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 so helpful for them uh, to grow up being a healthy, happy person. And we can also uh, look deeply to understand the difficulties. As parents, we um, train ourselves to be mindful, to be the master of our emotions, our feelings, so that we can also be there solidly to uh, help our children to see the difficulties and uh, where the suffering comes from so that we can find a way to help them, to support them. Um, th this is also how we as the elder sisters in the Dharma, in the monastery, uh, learn to practice to help our younger ones. I see that like the traditional way um, sometimes does not help. Like, of course, for our kids, um, or when we live in the monastery, uh, discipline is very important. Eh? Mm. But I uh, like to, um, to use punishment, criticism, uh, to punish the children, it just does harm more than help. Mm. And so, when we help uh, bring out the best in the children, uh, give them a sense of pride uh, to help them know, understand, like discover their self-worth. We, we need to look 
again into the way we teach our children, um, what kind of discipline that we use um, so that we can uh, help them. Um, children, they become shy and they have a lot of complexity, uh, complexes, sorry, a lot of complexes because they may be compared with other um, uh, peers, other friends. So they see that they are not good enough. But instead of like comparing our child with other children, um, or we focus too much on the achievement, then what about using encouraging words? Because children may fear uh, when they uh, cannot succeed in doing something, like doing good in the in a school, then we encourage them and um, and and um, say we we. Um, in our monastery, we say water the flowers, right? We um, um, water the seeds in making effort rather than uh, like wanting to 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 achieve like A or A plus, mm -hmm. uh, wanting to be uh, to. to uh, Like, sometimes the children, they cannot do well, and they may have the fear that they cannot please the teachers or the parents. So parents can encourage them by, like, um, um, help them to, 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 to make the effort, right? If maybe this time you cannot do well, but then you can try the next time. Mm. The next time you will do better. So if we say such encouraging words, it, it helps bring confidence in the child and they can make more. They, 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 um, um, they are not caught by fail or success, but they will uh, not be shy in order to... like more effort into doing better the next time. Mm. And we, so as parents, as children, they, um, they also look up to the adults, right? Um, and uh, they look up uh, to someone as the role model. So uh, parents, teachers, friends are like their role models. And we need to set good examples in, uh, for our children. So whatever we say to our children, we are able to do that. You cannot ask your kids to go do the homework while you are playing game, for example. Yeah. Or ask the kids to help mommy uh, to do the dishes while papa, daddy is watching TV. <laughs> so, um, like when you go to come here for the retreat and we have working families, it is so good that we can also bring, incorporate this practice to our home. Uh, we do things together, we practice together. Uh, I hope that parents can uh, support to create the environment of practice at home. So, practice, family practice as a Sangha. Uh, uh, nowadays, um, there are many apps, right? like the practice-oriented apps, like Headspace, 
like uh, Plum Village app, so helpful for the whole family to practice together. I remember one time when we were driving on the road, and uh, there was a heavy traffic, and right on the GPS the, of the, the, the brother's phone, it says, don't worry, relax, coming back to your breath. It will be okay. Well, it's just a very cool app for GPS. Yeah. So I hope that, yeah, electronic devices, uh, if we uh, use, overuse or we abuse, that is not helpful, but if we know how to use it um, properly, it helps, especially um, for such uh, situation. Um, so do things together. Uh, walk your talk. Whatever you say to your kids, you are able to do. Uh, like ask your kids to make the best, make their beds, make their room neat and tidy. Then parents also do the same. Mm. Yeah. And one thing that I learned from my own um, experience, um, like in my culture, uh, we, 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 accept, we accept the fact that um, parents and the adults, they have the authority that they can be right. Mm. Uh, I'm your parent. Listen to me. Mm. Do this. Don't do that. We have a game with the kids, do this, don't do that. Um, but nowadays, um, uh, we need to uh, um, respect, yeah, respect the feelings, respect the experience of our children. Uh, sometimes when the child wants to say something, and if the parents are not there, are not present to listen, to really understand why the, 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 the child has such um, um, expression or experience, and some, they may tend to like downplay, uh, say, say something that, that uh, don't really acknowledge what the child is experiencing. And that also contributed to uh, make the child feel shy. Yeah. Or um, like they may have some, they may hold uh, onto the consciousness some um, suffering, like uh, judgment. And so, Parents can um, create a safe space. Like pa parents can be like the container to hold space uh, for sharing difficulties. Yeah. So there comes the third mantra. I know you suffer, my dear. That's why I'm here for you. I know that you suffer, my dear. That's why I'm here for you. I'm here to help you hold this pain. I know you suffer, my dear. That's why I'm here for you. So this is like the reminder, this mantra uh, for the parents to make time to be there for your children to listen to the, your children, sh especially uh, when they want to share um, about their feelings, their uh, dif difficulties. Mm. And of course, parenting skill uh, is not easy. Um, sometimes we get too overwhelmed by all um, the, uh, the work and also by um, the, um, the, 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 the child's behavior. Mm. So we have the right to express our feeling. 
to ask for them help. Right? We, uh, we take care of our children, but then we also uh, train them to help us to be kind uh, to other people, to care for other people. Yesterday evening, when the child, they, they, after some time, they got bored and they just like run around so wildly. And I was so impressed when I stand there witnessing Nathan uh, to, 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 to handle so well the situation. Uh, so, so, so Nathan um, uh, expressed that, okay, I, uh, he had a hand motion, like when you do like this, is to show that um, you feel overwhelmed with feelings. So Nathan said, oh, now I'm feeling so overwhelmed because I've been talking a lot. Um, I'm, I'm feeling tired right now. So I need your help. Please go back to your breathing room and let us uh, listen to John Avi playing some music so that we can calm down. Mm. So we have the right to express uh, ourselves. And that goes the fourth mantra. Uh, please help, I suffer, I suffer, please help. Please help, I suffer, I suffer, please help. Please help me, my dear, to hold this pain. I need you to know, please, I suffer, please help. And that is the fourth mantra. Mm. That's why when the parents come here together to practice, you can be fellow practitioner. Both of you can support each other to, um, uh, to, to take care of the, the children. Mm. So, to... Uh, to end our sharing today, I would like to um, invite everybody um, to meditate yeah, um, on the transmission and the continuation. So each one of us is a child of our parent. And we are the parents of our children. So we look into um, the, 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 the seeds that have been transmitted to us by our ancestors, by our parents, so that we can see um, what kind of good seeds that we really feel grateful to our parents to our ancestors, and we really want to pass down to our children. And we also recognize the seeds of suffering that have been also uh, transmitted in, our, in, in us. And that become the habit energies and in our lifetime, it is so uh, good that we have the practice of mindfulness so that we can uh, work on a habit energy to transform. Because even if we have a very good intention to change, to transform ourselves, but if we don't really uh, seriously work with uh, transforming, transforming the seeds, um, the negative seeds, or transforming the habit energies, then we will, like, sometimes we, um, we know that, okay, I have received this tendency, this habit from my mother, like the complaining, uh, the tendency to complain too much when I'm tired. So I don't want it to, to, to do like her. But if we don't uh, work with 
this habit energy, then we will pass it down to our children. And we don't want it, but then we will find that we do exactly the same, like our mother, like our father. So that's why when, when we are tired, when we are uh, full, overwhelmed, uh, we need to make time and space to take care of ourselves so that we can be uh, fresh, solid and spacious, not to water, not to allow the negative seeds to, to water and to manifest. And I'd like to read to you a poem by uh, Dorothy Law, Nolte, about children learning what to leave. Yeah, it is so, uh, so fit that I'd like to read to you. If a child lives with criticism, he learns to condemn. Parents, the family is a very close environment that help uh, shape um, the, care, the personality of the, our ch uh, the, the children, right? If a child lives with hostility, he learns to fight. If a child lives with ridicule, he learns to be shy. So if we see that in us there's a tendency to be sarcastic, and, and try to avoid not to uh, water that seed. Mm. Instead, we choose to say words that can bring joy, hope, and confidence in our kids. Mm. If a child lives with shame, he learns to feel guilty. If a child lives with tolerance, he learns to be patient. If a child lives with encouragement, he learns confidence. Yeah. So words of encouragement help make our children have confidence in themselves. If a child lives with praise, he learns to appreciate. Instead of blaming, we we. we we choose to praise, but praise, um, um, proper praise, not, not the over praise, then to the point that you may uh, cause uh, our, ch our children to uh, become arrogant. <laughs> if a child lives with fairness, he learns justice. If a child lives with security, he learns to have faith. Yeah. And we create a safe space to hold pain and difficulties. And um, like when the children are around parents, please be aware not to, uh, like in your conversation, um, not to water the negative seed in them, like not to talk about the things that uh, overwhelm you or, like, or the things that you feel so fearful, that, that will uh, water the seed of fear, um, the, fear the seed of insecurity in the, 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 the children. If a child lives with approval, he learns to like himself. If a child lives with acceptance and friendship, he learns to find love in the world. So, identifying good seeds and not so good seeds, beneficial and unbeneficial seeds, or wholesome and unwholesome habit energies, so that we can choose what we want to water, what we want to strengthen and uh, 
passed down or uh, um, yeah, passed down to our uh, children. Uh, thank you so much um, for your listening. We end here with three sounds of the bell. <laughs>